Good morning, Modern Steaders. I thought in this morning's video we'd go over some hand tools that I'm always using here around the homestead. We get tons of questions about the different tools we use. So I thought today we'd start a small series and I'll go over the basic ones and the ones I find myself going to a lot of the time. So let's dig in. I'll bring you over here. The first one we're going to start with are tape measures. Believe it or not, we have a big assortment of tape measures and I don't even have them all down here. But a 25 foot tape measure is nice for building. You're always using long lengths. If you're doing remodeling and you're working in your house, a 16 footer is nice because it's half the weight almost. And why do you want this big thing on your tool belt or on your pocket, wherever, when you can have something smaller? And if you're not going over 16 feet or 8 feet, a 12 foot tape measure is really nice because it's that much smaller. The width of the blade is narrower, so your numbers, you don't you can't see them as good. So if you want a wider one, you're gonna need a bigger tape measure. I don't have any here, I don't think. I can find another one. These tape measures are broken down all the way down to 16th of an inch. You have 16th, 8th inch, and so on. And you have a small six-foot tape measure, which is nice, but it's even smaller. This is just for doing more quick work. I like this, it's flexible, so if I gotta measure a pipe, it's a lot easier. If I wanna measure anything for a round, if I wanna measure my pigs, this is nice. I also have a fabric tape measure. That one's genius, but I'll use the fabric tape measure when I'm measuring the pigs to try to find out their weight. I can hear the hate comments now, but this tape measure is nice to have. It's broken down into feet and inches. It's a 16-foot one. It shows you your quarter-inch marks. It goes down all the way to 30 seconds. I don't know how good you can see that. Focus. But also, it has millimeters. It doesn't break it down a whole lot on the millimeters. But this is really nice because most plywood nowadays is millimeters. Even though they call it 3 eighths, 5 eighths, quarter inch, if you measure it with a tape measure, it's really not. They're lying to you. It's all done in millimeters. So, it's nice to have a tape measure that does both. Here's another tape measure that has your fractions broken down for you. So if you're learning and you're trying to learn your lines, look for a tape measure like this. This is just a free, inexpensive one from Harbor Freight. Every once in a while they'll run a coupon. You go in and you get something free. That's what this one's from. Next we have our speed squares. I don't use these to as much as you can. I use them a lot of times for making lines, marking layout, figuring out angles. But they come with a huge extensive book telling you how to figure out all your different cuts. I mean... If you want to geek out, you could geek out on a speed square. Figure it out all of your, you can figure out all your valleys and your different angles you need for doing all this. These tools are invaluable. And they come with the book. Where we have our six inch speed square. This is for doing your two by fours and two by sixes. And then we also have, this one's a 12 inch speed square, which is nice if you're doing if you're working with plywood, sometimes it comes in handy. If you're working with 2x8s, if you're working with rough sawn lumber, wide boards, it comes in really handy to have. Let me see if I can show you another trick that works great with the speed squares. I hate to call it the poor man's chop saw, but if you don't have a chop saw and you want to have a nice square cut, because I'm not always great at cutting a square cut, at the very end I can find myself veering off, especially in a longer piece. So you can just figure out, you have to measure the distance from your fence to your blade, whatever side you're working on, and add that in when you're making your cut. Well, take your speed square, get a good grip, make sure it's square, Take the use your fence, guide it, and just right across, and you'll get a nice straight cut every time, and it looks nice and professional. 
when I bought the 12 inch speed square, that's what I bought it for, it's cutting 2x8s and having a nice straight cut. There's nothing worse when you're trying to remodel your house or build anything, trying to put something together and your cuts aren't square. So this came in handy for that. Another tool that's great to have around the homestead that's not very expensive, that helps you have straight lines, is a chalk line. There's so many different kinds of chalk lines. The big thing to look out for, this one's a Fat Max by Stanley. And it's got a wide string, so you get a wide line. Some people don't like that because they want, they're more fussier and they want to get, they don't want their pencil mark to be wide so they know exactly where to cut on. They grab another one right here. It's a little bit thinner. It's probably about maybe half the thickness. So this is what you're going to see. You're looking for a nice, good chalk line. There's metal ones and there's the older metal ones and there's some cheaper inexpensive plastic ones that you pull out and then you got to reel in and they're slow, they're not geared nice. The nice thing about the Irwin, the Fat Max, there's a couple other ones, is they have a push button in the center, you push it down and then you can pull your string and then you can reel it back up. Do you hear the click? That's it releasing because if you don't have that push button when you're pulling it your crank's going undone. So if you have it down or if you're helping somebody, you got this coming around hitting your finger, binding up. So if you can get a chalk line that you can push down and then you can pull it, you don't have that getting in your way. Works really nice. They make, let's see, there's red, blue, they have orange chalk, they have red chalk, I have blue chalk in my truck. There's all different kinds and they have different uses. Some of them last longer the color and they'll tell you. So this is permanent and it's a three. This one doesn't tell you but this one's going to wash off easier. So that's another thing if you're doing a project and you don't want the chalk to stay. See how permanent it is. I've seen chalk on a foundation wall that's 20 years old that's been there for that long. It's crazy. We'll try to keep each episode a good length. We won't try to go too long. 10 to 15 minutes is where I'll try to keep them. So we'll try to touch on five tools and get in depth on them a bit. My right, next is gonna be a cordless drill, battery operated drill, and some other tools because you can get pretty good prices on combos. I have a porter cable, I believe. It's all worn off. Yeah, it's a porta cable. They have different size batteries for them. When I got them, they came with a big battery and a little battery. The little battery stinks. You don't get a very good charge out of it. The newer porta cables that I've seen only have the thin batteries and they don't last. So I'm not recommending porta cables. I like this one. I got good use out of it. What I did find is the chuck would loosen up quite a bit. It's got a lot of throttle or snap to it, so it would, that snap will loosen up the chuck. But it works good. I've had this for whew, probably six or seven years, so I'm not complaining one bit. I bought a combo. Let me show you what came with the combo. When we got it. We got a skill saw, a flashlight, and a sawzall. As you can see, they haven't been used that much. The sawzall's been used the most. The skill saws, about brand new. The blade, this doesn't have very many cuts on it. The problem I've had with the porta cable ones is the batteries. The batteries aren't strong enough to run that equipment. I understand the equipment's older, but the new batteries will run the equipment better than the skill saw I have, but they don't last. They'll cut more plywood, but your battery dies very fast. You can probably get three or four cuts out of them. So I'm not going to recommend porta cable, but I'm definitely recommending a good battery operated combo set. You don't need to go crazy and buy the most expensive one out there. Milwaukee, DeWalt, they're all pretty pricey. And I've all found that the batteries only last so long. The gun might be a little bit better, unless you're a professional. Personally, even me, I do this for daily work. My next combo set I'm going to buy is going to be a Ryobi. 
My friend has a Ryobi. I helped remodel his house, and I used his equipment most of the time when we were over there. Came, comes with a skill saw, jigsaw, comes with a new flat vibrating saws, vacuum, some of the stuff we used we didn't use, jigsaw. The batteries last, they make a big one and a thin one. Get the bigger batteries, they're going to hold a better charge for you. And not just the charge, whatever you're using has more power. Not that it just lasts longer, but it has more power when it's cutting. So if you have an option to buy a kit and to get small batteries or the big batteries, get it with the bigger batteries. And when you're going to buy more batteries, make sure you can get the biggest battery you can buy. And what I mean by that, let me go find my other battery. When I mean bigger battery, I don't mean like 18 volt and 20 volt. I'm talking about the battery size itself. They come with they come with different size batteries. They're cheaper to make, the lithium. They still call this one a lithium XL and they call this one the lithium EX. And what I've noticed with Porta cable, this is what they're giving you. They're 20 volt all thin batteries so the battery doesn't hold the charge. The Ryobi is doing both. They give you both batteries. I think in the bigger kit they give you a little one and a big one. A lot of the smaller kits will just give you the little one and you can buy the big ones. You get longer life but you get more power for cutting so if you're cutting something it's going to cut through it smoother and faster and it's not going to bind as much. But there is benefits to a little battery and a bigger battery. The little battery you can get into a tighter spot better. So it's nice to have both of them. But you definitely want to get a big battery if you can. I'll have all these products linked on our Amazon page. And I'll have a link to the Amazon page down below. The next tool we use quite a bit is a corded skill saw. I use this all the time. This one's a Makita. I've had this for, I think, 12 years. It's the only skill saw I've ever owned myself. And I abuse it. We put it through work, and it's worked awesome. A lot of people are surprised to see I still have my fence. I love the fence. If you want to rip a small width, and you want to keep it even and have a straight line, you put your fence in. Take your measurement off your blade and you can rip all the same widths down. It's like a table saw. We have table saws here. We didn't always have them, but even if we do have them, it's a lot easier sometimes to grab my skill saw and make a bunch of cuts. But if you don't have a table saw, as long as you got your guide, you can make some repetitive, good, quick, straight cuts constantly. And it makes you look really good. But you want a nice tool. When you're buying tools, you want a good tool. You don't need to get top of the line, but you don't want to get bottom of the barrel. I'm going to say it probably cost me around 100 bucks. It's got a nice aluminum plate. It's got your angle guides so you can change and cut your 45s. You've got your depth adjustment here. So if you don't want to, if you're just cutting something thin, you can change the depth. We have a lot of tools, and people comment about that all the time. But these tools I've collected over the years. This one, I'm going to say is around 12 years old, maybe a little bit older. There's a story to this. The first apartment I lived in, in the bathroom, the hose that went to the toilet broke and sprayed all over the walls and ruined the walls inside the bathroom. And I called the landlord, and he's like, yep, I'll send somebody out to fix it blah 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 just leave the house unlocked and all this all that I had a dog at the time and that wasn't gonna work out that great I said I'll tell you what I'll fix it but you buy me a skill saw he said okay so I repaired the bathroom on nights and weekends got it done and that's how I got my skill saw so it's been a process to getting a lot of these tools we didn't go out and buy all of our tools at once it's been a process I think almost all of our tools have a story with them which is even better because that way it brings back memories when you go and use something like my dog I had her since I was in high school she passed away she was older but so not only do I have the memory of one of the first remodels I did was with the bathroom and that's how I earned 
my skill saw, but I have a memory of my dog. So it's kind of neat. My tools have a story and they remind me of so many different memories. When I'm sharing my tools with you, I'll share the stories because I like reminiscing. I think they're fun. And just to show you, it doesn't happen overnight and it's okay. It's not going to happen overnight. Your journey to homesteading, to wherever you want to go, takes time. And I know when we're doing the journey, or on the journey, sometimes it's not coming fast enough. We're not thinking it's coming fast enough. But when we look back, we have stories to share and to tell. And that makes it fun and exciting. So, with a skill saw, you don't need a top of the line one. You need a middle of the line one. With any tool, you don't want to buy the cheapest tool, but you want to buy a good one. And that's what I've always done, and that's treated me really well. The only tools I'm really ever replacing are the battery operated ones, because they do. They have an expiration date on them, they're not going to last. So, if you have any other questions on the tools that I didn't touch on, leave it in the comments down below. Let me know what other tools you would like me to do in our next video. Once a week we'll be sharing with you the tools we use around our homestead, what we have, why we like them, why we don't like them. Let us know if you like that. Leave it in the comments down below. Let us know what tools you'd like us to go over. We'll put all the tools that we talked about today on our Amazon page. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.